Hey there, Wolf Collide deck. You know, I know today is Friday the 13th, which means you're probably going to give me another Grobnar deck, but if you could find it in your heart to give me something else, I'd really appreciate it. Could you do that for me? Stop looking at me that way. Welcome back, Forging Friends. We are on our fourth to last deck of this box. Let's crack it open and see what we got. I'm going to hope that uh, we can... Maybe see something besides a Brobnar this time, but of course it is Friday, Friday the 13th, so we're bound to see it, but there's always a chance we might not, you know? There are other houses in this game, believe it or not. So today we have... Brobnar! <laughs> Star Alliance and Dis, of course, Brobnar. And it is Deadly Bludgeon Yanis with a black and white Archon, uh, kind of similar to the last one we had. Hmm, Okay. Well, it's Brodnar, so we can pretty much guarantee it's going to be a low one, <laughs> almost. But we'll have a look at it and see what we got. All right, going to drop down the Archon card, and we start with Star Alliance. We've got Walls Blaster, an upgrade with an Amber Pip. This creature gains Fight Reap. You may deal two damage to a creature or attach Walls Blaster to Chief Engineer Walls. After you attach Walls Blaster to Chief Engineer Walls, stun a creature for each upgrade on Chief Engineer Walls. So, of course, we're hoping for a lot of upgrades in this deck. Then we have Galactic Census, a rare action card with an Amber Pip. Play, if there are exactly three or exactly four houses rep represented among creatures in play, gain one Amber. If there are exactly five, gain two Amber. If there are six or more, gain three Amber. Okay, so we're hoping for a decent number of creatures per house here, hopefully. At least from us, so we can guarantee three, and then hopefully we can get uh, up to that that six effect too from our opponent. That'd be that's a good card late game possibly mid to late game. We have Tactical Officer Moon, a creature with four power and assault two. Play you may rearrange the creatures in a player's battle line. Pretty good to get around some taunts or elusives or just taunts really. Zap is an action card with an amber pit. Play deal one damage to a creature for each house re represented among creatures in play. So we want to see creatures for sure. Lots of creatures. We have two of those. Definitely need a lot of creatures in this deck. Oh boy. Science Officer Kincan, a two-power creature with Elusive, and after a player chooses an active house, which matches no cards in play, steal one Amber. Good card. Get a couple steals off of that. We have Medic Ingram, a three-power creature with Play, Fight, Reap. You may heal three damage from a creature and ward it. Great for protection. Light of the Archons is an upgrade with an Amber Pip. This creature gains a plus one power and plus one armor for each upgrade attached to it. Well, we haven't seen too many upgrades yet, but we'd like to see some more. Lieutenant Kirkar is a five power creature with Taunt and Hazardous 3. Good to protect that Medic Ingram or anything else. We've got First Officer Frayne, a four power creature with Play, Fight, Reap. A friendly creature captures one Amber. There's Chief Engineer Walls, a two power creature with Elusive. And play, fight, reap. You may return an upgrade or robot card from your discard pile to your hand. Good to recover those upgrades. We can use them multiple times. And we have two of him. That's cool. Going on to Dis, we have uh, an, the action card Demon's Bane with an Amber Pip. Play, destroy a demon creature. Well, that's not going to be great because most Dis creatures are demons. So, uh, guess not play it with, with Dis out. We have the Obsidian Forge artifact with an Amber Pip. Action sacrifice any number of friendly creatures, then you may forge a key at plus six current cost, reduced by one amber for each creature sacrificed this way. If you do, destroy Obsidian Forge. So, of course, we want to see a lot of creatures in this deck. <laughs> As with many cards, we want to see a lot of creatures and ideally some more upgrades. Library of the Damned, an artifact with action archive a card. That'll be good for our efficiency. The Evil Eye is an action card with an amber pip, and keys cost plus three amber during your opponent's next turn. We have Rock Grub, a one power creature with play. Your opponent loses one amber. Reap, archive Rock Grub. And we have Misery Exploit, an action card with play. Gain one amber for each damaged enemy creature. Need some way to spread damage around. There's an Infernus, a four power creature with play. Purge up to two cards from a discard pile. Your opponent loses amber equal to the total amber bonus of the purged cards. Can we get one in multiples? Maybe? Yeah, we have two. Hey, that's fantastic. Two Infernus is great. Okay, not a third one, but two at least is really good. We have the Im Spectre with two power and destroyed purge a random card from your opponent's hand. This disc might be pretty good, actually. Uh, Festering Touch is a action card with an Amber Pit. 
Choose up to two creatures, deal one damage to each creature. If that creature is already damaged, deal three damage instead. Good with that misery exploit. Buzzle is a three power creature with skirmish and play fight. You may purge one of Buzzle's neighbors. If you do, ready Buzzle. And Binding Irons is an action card that gives the opponent three chains. Decent disruption as well. Moving on to, of course, Brobnar. Wouldn't be Friday the 13th without Brobnar. We have the Bellowing Patrizate, a rare seven power creature. And while he's ready, each creature takes one damage after it enters play. Uh, I think, I don't know, we, we probably have some good destroyed effects like that uh, Inspector and stuff. So this possibly might have some use for us. We'll have to wait till we get to the counts to figure that out. So we have him. We've got Fire Breath. It is a upgrade, which is nice, uh, with an Amber Pip. This creature gets plus three power and gains before fight. Deal two damage to each neighbor of the creature this creature fights. Want to see lots of good fight abilities then. Warrior's Refrain is an action card with an Amber Pip. Play, stun each creature with power three or lower. And we have two of those. I hope we don't have too many. Uh, we might have a lot of three power or lower creatures. I'm not sure. Uh, Shorty is a four power creature with Assault Four and Reap Enraged Shorty. So he definitely wants to fight a lot. And we have Narp, an eight power creature with one armor and his neighbors cannot reap. He is a flank warrior. Mog Hunter is a six power creature with fight, deal d two damage to a flank creature. Oh wow, another one. So we have, we're getting some, we're getting some decent numbers of creatures here in this Brobnar, nice. And then we have Iris Staff, an artifact with an Amber Pip. Enrage a creature, give that creature a plus one power counter. Okay. Barn Raising is an action card with play. For the remainder of the turn, your opponent loses one Amber each time a friendly creature fights. Okay. Volcano is an action card that deals four damage to a creature and gives us two chains. So that reduces our efficiency back down. And we have two of those. Uh, probably not the best way to end the Brobnar. <laughs> two Volcanoes. All right. Well, as usual, I will do the, uh, the card separation and we will be right back. All right. I've gone ahead and separated out the cards. Let's see how many creatures we have. We are at... 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 creatures. And let's look at our amber. We've got... So 18 uh. creatures. Um, right, we said 18 creatures. It, it doesn't... Uh, it's, it's kind of above average. It's not super high. Um, I'd say it's medium to high for worlds collide but i think we couldn't get at least two amber off of this one so we'll say two amber three four five six seven eight nine uh ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen amber there but i'll subtract one because the snarp will prevent its neighbor from reaping so i'll probably lose at least one reap from that on average so i'll say 14 amber for that um, and then we'll go for, let's see, Amber Control. What do we have for Amber Control here? So this steals one. Uh -huh. So we'll count that as one. Two. Three. Four. Five. Five in the creatures. And let's see. Six. Six so far. And here we have this one. So that's that's seven amber control cards. Pretty good. That's a good amount of amber control, actually. Um, so then we go to artifact control. There's no artifact control in this deck at all. I didn't see a single card that had anything to do with artifacts, so that's a zero. Uh, looking at creatures, creature control, anything that damages a creature, we have a decent amount of that, I think. I think. So, that's... So that's, that's the main creature control we have. It does one damage to everything after it enters play. Not the greatest thing, because we have a lot of small guys. Um, we only have one one-power creature. Um, so, that won't really be good for that in particular, but... 
these uh these walls and can can I guess won't survive long anyway. They are elusive though. So overall, the um, the Bellwing Patrizate isn't uh, it, it's fine. I think it'll be nice to plink around some damage, especially with that Misery Exploit. So this could this could be a good synergy with that Misery Exploit. So it might get us some more Amber. Maybe we'll count that Misery Exploit as, as an extra one. We'll count it as two. So we'll say the Amber count is fifteen. Um, so then looking, so that's one, two, three things that damage a creature, right? That's all we had in here so far, I think, for creature control. And then in here, looking for creature control, we have a four, five, six, not going to count that, seven, eight, nine, nine so far, and in here, ten, eleven. I don't know how often we'll play these because they give us two chains, but um, they are creature control. If we're falling behind somehow, even though we have 17 creatures, that's some serious anti-synergy there. Um, so a decent amount of creature control as well. For efficiency, we have a bit of <laughs> a bit of a weird thing here. So we have that uh, the the Library of the Dam that lets us archive cards, which is kind of recurring synergy. It gets us an extra card pretty much every time we call this. Um, but on top of that, unfortunately, we have those volcanoes. So we have one positive and two negative. So I'll count that as a negative one uh, for efficiency. And for recursion, uh, we don't really have too much that recurs creatures. Uh, you could argue that that rock grub might recur itself, but I'm not going to count that. Um, and the chief engineer walls bring back our upgrades when we play them, fight with them, or reap with them. So whenever we play, fight, or reap with them, uh, they will give us back an upgrade. But uh, I don't know if that... Uh, is, in, is particularly good recursion, but I'll count that as one. So I'll say recursion is one. And then for disruption, things that affect the hand. Let's see. What do we have that affects the hand? Uh, one. And then these two are disruptions. So two, three. That affects our opponent's future hands. Three. Uh, that's amber control. Three so far. I think we have a binding iron, so that'll be four. So four, four disruption. So, you know, we, we keep getting these Brobnar decks, and I, I want them to be good, and I, I try to see the best in decks, but I don't think this one's going to be... If that last one was the way it was, I think uh, this one's going to be pretty close. I'm going to say in the 50s. You know, maybe I'll, I'll guess too low, and I can only hope I guess too low this time. But I'm going to give this one a... Maybe a 57, you know? It seems like it's a little bit better than that last deck, but, uh, you know, it has a fewer creatures, and it has a lot of anti-synergy with that Bellum Patrizate. But then again, the Misery Exploit might offset that in the SAS system, so I'm going to go with a 57. Go ahead and make your guess, and I'll see you at my desktop. Okay, welcome back to my desktop. I have the link copied. Uh, it's another Brobnar deck, so uh, it looks like it's going to be in the 50s. I'd be surprised if it were in the 60s, but... It had some stuff going for it. That Belling Patrizate, like I said, goes pretty well with a, a card, for example, like Misery Exploit over here. Uh, but, uh, you know, that's one synergy in what what is inevitably Brobnar being Brobnar. So go ahead and make your guesses now. I'm locking in my 57. Let's see what we have. It's a 60. Okay, wow. I, it surprised me. <laughs> it did surprise me. Uh, so we have, uh, let's see, 57 base arc. Um, Robnar is really low, of course, but the Dis and Star Alliance are making up for it here. Um, plus four synergy, minus two anti-synergy. Okay, so for Amber Control, nothing really subtracting from that because we have nothing that uh, exalts, of course. But uh, the Barn Raising is very low. It's rated very low, of course, in Furnace. Two times two, you know, having two in Furnace is fantastic. Uh, 17 for the amber. Narp, like we thought, taking away half an amber point uh, from us because it's preventing a reap. Um, Kin Can helps a bit. The Warriors Refrain. Yep. Yeah, so, you know, about what we thought. Pretty pretty decent amount of amber generation considering how many creatures we have. 17 and the um, and the uh, am and the amount of amber on the cards and as well as other things. Speed gives us a positive point three. Uh, mm -hmm. Library of the Dam being a reusable being a reusable artifact. Kind of probably helps there, uh, even though we have minus two for the uh, volcano. So it offsets it a little bit to be positive there. Um, let's see. 
As far as recursion, just the walls, counting just the walls, it doesn't count the rot grub because it recurs itself only from the archives. And some disruption here, a little bit of disruption, the infernus counts, yep. So uh, pretty close to what we said. Um, it's just probably good practice to, to always err on the side of, you know, lower on the Brobnar side for arc whenever you're looking at a deck, if it has Worlds Collide Brobnar in any, in any case. Uh, looking at these synergies and anti-synergies here, we have Kincan being minus synergy with the artifacts. Uh, oh, because the artifacts stick around a lot, it'd be less often that we get to call uh, a house with no cards in play, right? We have uh, one artifact from every house. Uh, no, no, two artifacts from Dis and one from Brobnar. So it's, you know, those would stick out and our opponent doesn't have any artifact control. We don't have any artifact control. So... If those come out first, Kin Can's not going to get any use. So that's something to be aware of. That's some anti synergy with Kin Can for sure. We have some positive because we have a, a decent amount of upgrades. We have some upgrades. We have three, I think, at least. Um, and I don't know what base synergy percent means here, but that's a thing. We have a lot of bo uh, bonus with this Festering Touch. This Festering Touch gives us a lot of synergies. Damages multiple enemies, damages multiple enemies and deals damage so yeah we have a lot of stray damage so this festering touch should pretty pretty often get that three damage and then we have that misery exploit to make use of that as well um minus 70 here for the warriors refrain because we have so many power three or lower creatures which we we take, took into account uh here's the bellowing Patrick's eight we have one well, one one power creature so it's only a mighty minus 25 percent and anti-synergy so not as much as i thought it really only counts as it as an anti-synergy if it has a creature uh as a, a creatures included that will be destroyed immediately like a one power creature so okay that's something to note for the future uh we have demons <laughs> we have infernus so this will kill our own infernus this demon's bane here that you can't quite see uh and then going down here um yeah, like we thought the volcano is a minus 120% power or, or efficiency, minus 120% because we have so many creatures of four power or lower. And that's pretty much it. Oh, the NARP, of course, is bad with the creatures that are good for reaping. NARP is NARP is a, a pretty bad double-edged sword. It's an eight power creature that doesn't have any real protection and just has a complete uh, anti-synergy with pretty much every deck it's in. So, uh, and we don't have too many good fight effects here either. You know, or, or cards that support fighting aside from um, the uh, uh, barn raising. Yeah, we have barn raising, and that's the one card that kind of supports fighting more often. I mean, yeah, the Mog Hunters get uh, some extra damage if they fight, but the real big hitting damaging effects aren't uh, aren't present here in this deck. So better than we thought, at least. You know, we 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 guessed fifty seven. Um, this is probably the highest Brobnar deck I'll see in this box. Um, I, we might have seen one higher before. I can't quite remember, but um, yeah. I mean, I like that it has two Infernuses. A uh, bit of nice with a Hysteria, maybe an Exhum. Uh, but this box seems to be really heavy on the Brobnar and Dis, doesn't it? But anyway, uh, what did you guys guess? Feel free to leave your guess in the comments. And if you have any uh, any questions or things to say also leave that in the comments and if you like this video uh, feel free to like it and if you want to see more of this content i appreciate a subscribe uh thanks all have a good one